Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God is an awesome God on this morning. God is still keeping us, no matter what it looked like. Hallelujah. The world seems like they're going astray, but God is still calling on his people to pray without ceasing. To stand on the wall and doing what he has to required to our hands. Laying down our plates. Hallelujah. Praying for this nation. Praying for this world situation. God is an awesome God on this morning. And he still loves us in spite of no matter what we're going through. Each and, each and every one of us is going through something. Something different. But God can hear all of us all at one time. Hallelujah. His line is never busy. Hallelujah. And for that, I say thank you. Hallelujah. We thank God for just being God, for loving on us and keeping us and bringing us back into the house one more time. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And I'm so glad. Hallelujah. He's blessing us. He's keeping us. He's delivering us. And we need to stay on the wall praying. Living for the Lord, no matter what the other ones are doing. We as Christians, we as God's people, have got to stay steadfast, unmovable. Hallelujah. Because that's what God is requiring. Hallelujah. We give honor to our apostle, the angel of his house, Apostle Juanita Troy. We give her honor. Associate Pastor Ella Rudolph Wamba. And the minister of the hour, Elder Michael Moore, is going to give us our word on this morning. And all of you that so diligently, like as I say, and I'm going to, because you deserve honor, the ones that's helping and working with us, I give you honor also. Amen. At this time, our choir is going to give us a few selections.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Glory, glory. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I hope you feel what we're feeling. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for what he's doing in our spirits and in our souls. We bless God on this morning. Hallelujah. For being such a wonderful loving God. Yes, yes. Loving on us in spite of. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. At this time, we're going to get out of the way for the speaker of the hour. Elder Michael Moore is going to give us our word. Amen. Amen. Give it on to God, to our pastor, the great anointed Apostle Juanita Troy. Amen. To my wife. Amen. Those of you that's in the service this morning and those of you that's online with us on this morning. The song said, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. The Bible tells us where two or three are gathered together in his name, he said he will be there also. Yes, sir. So since he's here, all we have to do is bless Amen. that wonderful name of Jesus. Yes. No matter where you stand, no matter what's going on, all you have to do is bless yes. that wonderful name of Jesus. I guarantee he'll come yes, to your rescue. Yes, will. He'll come and see about you when trouble's all around you. Just bless that wonderful name of Jesus. This morning I want to take you down to the book of Daniel. The sixth chapter, the first through the thirteenth verse. When God gave this to me, I sit back and I was pondering and I was wondering. I wanted to go a different way. I said, God, another lion's den message. But he said, my son, I'm going to give you what I want you to give my people. I'm thinking again in my mind that I wanted to go another way, but I still couldn't go that way. God brought me back to Daniel 6, 1 through 13. And it reads as thus. As it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom of 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. When this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the priests, they became an excellent spirit was in him. And the king through thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the priests sought to find acquisition or acquisition against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find none occasion, nor fault, for much as he had, he was faithful, and he never erred or faulted, could they find in Daniel. Then said these men, we shall not find an occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the laws of his God. Then the presidents and priests assembled together to the king. And said this unto him, King Darius, live forever. Verse 7 says, All the presidents and the kingdoms and the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captain, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask any petition of any god or man for thirty days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Yes. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of murdered Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in the chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before God, All right. as he did aforetime. Then these men of Sul and found Daniel praying and making supplications before his God. All right. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or any man within 30 days, save the old king, shall be cast into 
the den of lions. The king answered and said, the thing is true. According to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altered not. Then as the day said out before the king, that Daniel, that Daniel, that which is of the children of the captivity of Judea, regarded not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition four times a day. Just want you to know when God starts to elevate you, jealousy will set in. And for a thought, he gave me this to let me and his people know right. that somebody is watching you. All right now. Somebody is looking at you. All right. Somebody's watching the footsteps that you make. Yeah, right. The talk that you talk. Yes. And the walk that you walk. Yeah. The chronology of Daniel life shows that he had been a faithful government servant. Yeah. For more than seven years. During the regime change in the temporary resume caught the eye of the incoming king, which was King Darius, who appointed him as one of three national governors. His jealous colleagues decided to off the elder statesman, but because he was above reproach, failed to find any charge or fault against him. Daniel was living a good life. Daniel knew who he served, and he would not take down. Right. Determined to bring about Daniel's demise, they crafted a plan right. of religious persecution, convinced the unwitting king to sign it, and targeted Daniel for execution while he prayed in his room. Right. Instead of throwing Daniel a well-deserved retirement dinner, King Darius wound up throwing Daniel in as lion's food. Right. Daniel's commitment and integrity and devotion to the Lord great hero. All right. The Old Testament counterpart to Apostle John was Daniel. God called both these men beloved. All right. Daniel gives us a powerful example of how to live righteous in a society that does not honor God. All right. Somebody is watching you. Lord. As we go about our daily activities as Christians, somebody is looking at you. All right. They are looking at the way you walk. Especially when things are going toxic, tipsy in your life. Yeah. When tragedy comes, knocking on your door, yeah. they begin to look to see if you can stand when you are going through. They may be looking to see if you can walk that walk that you're always talking about. Right. Are you trusting God the way you talk about? Are you trusting God to bring you out? Or are you complaining about your situation? Yeah. What you're telling people, they are looking at you to see what you gonna do when trials and tribulations come your way? They want to know are you gonna stand like you're always telling me? They may be watching you on your job, how you react when there are non believers all around. What words are coming out of your mouth? How you act when things don't go your way? Right. When someone pushed you the wrong way, uh -oh. someone lied on you, uh -oh. someone talking bad about you. Do you go to your prayer closet or do you? becoming a Christian? Oh, Are you living that life that if someone said Dude, that you did something, they would say to him no, 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 that's not true. Uh -huh. He's not like that. Yeah, because of the way you carry yourself, the way you walk, and the way you talk. Oh, I was reminded of when I was on the job out at Goodyear. Uh -huh. oh, One of the supervisors came by and said, uh, more I need to talk to you. Yes, yes. I said, okay, A truck out in front of them as they were coming by All right. to check your equipment and your stuff. Right. I'm sitting there saying, what? I was pondering in my mind, what were they talking about? Yes. They looked at me and said, you know what? Don't even worry about it because right. I told them that's not like you. You don't walk like that and you don't talk right. like that, so I know that's he right. won't do that. Right. The thing that they said, I didn't even have a clue about what was going on. Right. But because of the way that I was walking and talking, they stood yeah. That's the way we gotta be when we're serving a God that sits high and looks down low. We gotta walk the walk that we're talking about. We gotta live the life that we're talking about. You don't have to go around boasting who you are. You don't have to walk around wearing a hat on your head that says I'm a child of God. I'm saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. You gotta let your actions speak for you. Because somebody is watching you. 
There are people watching and looking for excuses to reject this gospel. Yes. Someone is looking to see you fall down. Yes. Someone is looking to see if you are trusting God all the way, no matter what's going on around you. Yes. The world may be crumbling down, but you still got to stand for who you believe. Are you still going to trust God when things start to go bad in your life? I was reminded of Job. He had lost everything that he had. Yet he still trusted God to bring him out. Yes. Even his wife, the mother of his children, told Job, you ought to curse God and die. Yes. But Job kept his integrity. Yes. That's what we got to do. We got to keep our integrity. Yes. Job, the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles, moral uprightness. He was known to be a man of integrity and he had a state of being whole and undivided. Yes. He trusted in God no matter what was going on in his life. That's how we got to be saints. We got to be trusted in God no matter what's going on yes. in your life. Yes. You might not have food on your table, but you got to believe that there is a God that will provide. You might not have money to pay your light bill, but there is a God that will provide for you. We need to be careful where we go. We need to be careful yes, what we God. say yes, and careful what we do because somebody watching you from your husband to your wife yes, right. to the camera on your cell phone My Lord. to the camera at your ATM machine yes. to the cameras up and down the aisles at Walmart while you are shopping. Right. Somebody That's is watching right. you. Right. It might not be your neighbor next door. Right. It may be the neighbor two doors down from you. Ooh. But somebody is watching you. You're not fooling anyone, and even when you come in at 2 o'clock in the morning, somebody is watching you. In our text, Daniel had an audience, he had an assembly of men below his window. They were listening and watching to see what Daniel was going to do. You see, as Daniel got on his knees and prayed, that was their alibi to get Daniel. Daniel did not care about what they did or what they said, but he still faced Jerusalem with his windows open and prayed as he always did. Whenever you decide to give your life to Christ, uh -huh. you become a peculiar person. Yes, you do. And people will start to watch you to see if you're gonna do what you say you're doing, to see if you believe like you say you believe. All right. And just because people are watching you should not make you change your position in, your own, in life. It should not make you change your position in the stance that you're believing in. See, Satan is trying to intimidate you. He understands that when you trust in God and lean not to your own understanding and pray, there is power in your life. And Satan knows this. When prayer has fixed things in your life, there's nothing in the world that can harm you as long as you trust in God. We ought to pray when they are looking and when they are not looking. When the hellhounds are nibbling at your heels, you ought to pray and watch God make a way out of no way. Watch God heal your body. Watch God move in situations for you. Watch God move in the life of your children, your friends, and all those that walk around you. Because you're serving a God that's watching over you. You need to wave your hands anyhow and give God some praise. You need to join. God to pray. Not on what he's going to do, but on what he's already done in your life. You got to give God the praise. Let somebody know that there's a God that's on your side. You got to let them know that who I stand for. I'm going to stand on the word of God and I'm going to take that. No matter what it look like, no matter what you call me, no matter what you say about me, I'm not going to take that. watching you. Yes. But I want you to know this morning that God is also watching you. Yes. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, God has his eyes on you. Yes. God is going to get the glory out of your life. If you don't take down, God is going to get the glory. Even though Joseph said Daniel still got the glory. He went through the test of going down into the lion's den. But God went down there with him. So if you're going through a fiery furnace, God's going to be right there with you. As it was there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He won't leave you alone. Hallelujah. We serve a God that won't 
you down. We serve a mighty God that's got all power in his hands. All we have to do is just trust and believe it. And he will make a way out of no way. Even though man is watching, remember God is watching also. And just a thought as I was trying to prepare this, God had took me back to a couple of weeks ago. Man, man had put out a decree that we must wear face masks. That's right. Especially when we're outside in a crowd or a group. That's right. And he was standing and talking to me, but I could not understand what he was trying to tell me. Yes, Lord. As I stood in this long line mm -hmm. trying to get some plates and some cups at the Sam's Club. Mm -hmm. There was about 10 to 15 people standing over on the side. And they said they was from a certain church here in Fayetteville. All right. But as they stood, they did not they did not obey the social distances. Mm, okay. They were not wearing any type of mask or shield or protection. And I heard someone in the line say, how can they tell me this does and does for the Lord said they can't even obey the law oh, of the land. God said he established the government. Oh. We have to go by what they say. If they tell us to do something wrong, we know who we serve. We don't have to do that thing, but we have to obey the laws of the land. When you're driving down the road, you come to a stop sign. No matter if anything coming, you by yourself, you must stop. When you come to a red light and the light turn red, you must stop. That's right. See, Satan knows the word also. But one thing we have over him, he cannot live the word of God. But we can. And somebody's watching our walk. Yes. Yes. Somebody is watching our talk. Yes. And when you speak out of turn, they say, Well, I thought he was so and so and so and so. That's it. That's right. But you got to hold up the balance. Yes. You got to walk and walk and talk and talk. Out. That's right. Because That's Jesus, God, the Son, the Father yes. is on our side. Yes. No matter who's looking at you, remember God is looking at you also. Yes. Amen. Yes. As we give God some praise on this. Somebody's watching me. Amen. 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 We thank God for the man of God. That word, I tell you, God is just lining up the word. Word after word. Service after service. And if we just open up our hearts to receive this word and get it in our spirit like God wants us to. We'll come out of this thing and we'll come out delivered. Hallelujah. So God can use us. And that's what he wants during this pandemic, yes. during this COVID. He wants to see a new creature. He wants to see us walking upright yes. and standing for something. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Yes. To God be the glory. Yes. Be the glory Hallelujah. It's a good day. Yes. It's a good day. Yes. Hallelujah. And we thank God for it. At this time, our choir is going to give us our last selection, and we're going to have our closing prayer by the speaker of the hour. Amen. Amen.